editor here. So, this episode. Turns out the microphone didn't work. I'm assuming you don't want to watch two hours of me typing in complete silence. I'm just going to skip ahead to the next episode. You didn't really lose much anyway. What I was doing was writing the bulk of the parser and dealing with the code that actually stores information about the instructions that are read from the source file in memory. And I was doing it all wrong. So, no great loss. Well, let the previous session be a lesson to you about coding too late at night. So what I was doing wrong all through there is that I had conflated two different things, both of which are using the heap of records. The first is the uh, the heap as being, well, it's really a list, the list of records as being a representation of the incoming source code. And the other thing is using it as a memory store for arbitrary data objects. So uh, the symbol definitions actually need to appear as arbitrary data objects, but a label definition like this has to appear as a item in the source code. So what we actually need is a new record, which we will put here, which is a label definition. And that's going to say that this label is defined at the current program counter. And then there will be a reference to the symbol. And we need to add a record here. So this will be um, So now we can def we can define the symbol object anywhere, and then the label definition will appear at the point where the label should be set. And with the additional clear thinking, this actually simplifies these things over here. So we have three types of leaf symbol which is an address in zero page, an address in the BSS, and an address in the text segment, plus uh, a computed symbol, which will also contain constants. Um, do we need uninitialized versus unknown? I think so. So, so. So over here in parse expression, this is correct. Whenever we find a computed symbol, we are going to resolve the underlying variable. So the thing that's been left in token variable and token value, which is what the parser will actually use, will be the base variable and the accumulated offset. So that's correct. The next bit is symbol definition. So if we, we add or find the symbol, we read the token. If the token is a colon, it is a label reference. So that we know that this symbol that we're referencing must be a forward reference or a something weird just happened to my computer. Okay, let's try that again. I think I've removed the offending program. But yeah, my computer's having a bit of a hard time at the moment. Not quite sure why. Okay, where were we? So we we have just seen a label definition because we have a colon. If the symbol is uninitialized, 
which means that we have just created it here. We want to proceed. If it's unknown, meaning it's a forward reference, we proceed. Let's actually change this to reference. Okay, so we know that in both these cases we're going to end up with a text symbol. However, we also um, we also want to add a label definition record. which points at our symbol. OK, so now an equals sign uh, means that we are creating a, uh, a computed value. So if the symbol is anything other than uninitialized fail, pass the expression and we set the symbol up. OK, that builds. Now, what did we get? So we should have a forward reference for label which is what we have here. Then we have the uh, expression record indicating that we have an LDA that is pointing at that symbol. With that opcode AD, and the address is 1965, which should point at the, uh, the label record. And the offset is 1, which is correct. And that's the end. Then we have a byte record containing the RTS. Then we have a label definition record. 830065. So that has actually created a label a label definition pointing at 6500, which doesn't make sense. So this seems to be not correct. So I uh, fired up the actual debugger because my emulator here has one. It's a very simple machine code level debugger. But after printing the address of the table and looking at the memory, what we're seeing here makes very little sense. No, it makes perfect sense. Uh, this is not a symbol record. This is a label definition record. So that now becomes like so. And if we dump the memory again, 836A2F. 2F6A is the address of the top of the heap, so that's done. Okay. Now well, that took an annoyingly long time to figure out, which is what happened offline. Uh, never mind. Okay. So we now have 
there is our label definition record, there is end of file. And now notice that we are not actually paying attention to the program counter anywhere here. That will come later in a second pass through. Okay, what have we got so far then? We should now have proper definitions. We should be able to do this and have it work. So we create the value A here pointing at a symbol of type 5, meaning computed. There is a reference to our symbol. There is our offset. There is our name. Then here is our uh, forward reference, which is now a text type 4. And the link pointer. Here we have our expression, uh, the LDA. Hang on. No, up. Here is our LDA. AD is the opcode. 1968 is the address, which is also the address that's in A. That's the, the backing symbol. Uh, followed by the offset, that's not right. It has failed to propagate the offset into the expression node. Great. So I thought that was working. Right, well a lot of this code here is garbage. So what we're doing here is we fetch the underlying symbol, which has got the offset in it. We dereference it. If it's computed, we dereference it. So we now have the base variable in token variable and the offset in offset. If there is a plus or minus following, we wish to update the offset and save. And here is our one. Okay. I think I'm going to call that done. So there is a ton of stuff that needs actual work, but we should have the basics of our assembler parser. It only supports ALU instructions and single opcode instructions, but there is enough here to start to move on to the second pass and we're at ouch 4k suddenly got bigger yeah this code is a bit contorted it may be possible to simplify this anyway uh, as this is a prototype I now want to move on to the next bit which is uh, determining code placement. So this is what we developed the records for. What we're going to do 
is walk the data structure that we've put together, that is, this stuff, why have I called that tokens? Um, is walk the data structure trying to assign sizes to things. And this will allow us to actually put concrete values to these symbols. So we are going to simply go for that. What this is going to be is uh, so we start at the top and we iterate down through the list. This is why we were sure that all our records had sizes so that we can walk them efficiently. So, so the type is in the top byte and the length is in the uh, the top nibble, more or less, top three bits, and the bottom is in the bottom five bits. So, this will walk the list and do nothing, which is good. We are going to keep track of the program counter. So if this is a byte record, we increment the program counter. Very simple. And here, let's just, once we reach the end, let's just print the program counter. Uh, actually, that should be len minus one because we don't want to include the overhead. In fact, we can do this properly. record and we want the offset of bytes. Okay, that's showing that we've used zero bytes because, ooh, interesting, we do have a bytes record in here, it's that RTS, so we should have had one. And that should be type, not len. Right, so we have one byte. Now, the only, the only other thing we currently have is an ALU operation. This can be Zero 
Uh, this can be two or three bytes long. Oh hell, uh, I've been dramatically overthinking this. So all this complicated stuff here. We know up front whether uh, I was going to say that we know up front whether our instruction is pointing at zero page or not from the type of the symbol. But of course we don't. Because it might be a forward reference. And down here I have Uh, okay, this resolves a, the forward reference to a label to a text symbol. So once we've seen the label definition, we now know that the symbol is forward reference. But we know the symbol is pointing to the text segment and therefore uh, must be using two byte addressing modes. But during the pass phase, parse phase, we might be looking at a forward reference here, therefore we don't know this. So we're always going to have to use the longest encoding. Now, once we've finished the parse phase, all symbols should be resolved. So, So if there are any forward references left, otherwise we just do nothing. So we should be able to test that by just doing LDAZ. We don't have a Z. So here, under rec record ALU, we want to be using either the two byte uh, or the, th the two byte address or the one byte address. So this is straightforward. If a variable, if there is a variable set, yeah, if there is a variable set and It's pointing at zero page. Then uh, then we want to change the B value encoding, which I shall find down here. These. to use the zero page form, but only if the encoding, looking at the wrong column, this column, 
only if it's something that can be legally turned into the zero page form otherwise we leave it at the uh, the absolute address form so that's if it's seven make it five if it's three make it one This is unsetting the two bit from the B code. I'm just looking to see, are there any other uses of that bit? So, no bit set, bit one set, bit 2 set, bit 3 set. So this is 0, 1, 1. This is 0, 0, 1. This is 1, 1, 1. This is 1, 0, 1. 6 here is one one zero and we do not want to uh, clear the two bit because that will take us to this which is the wrong thing okay so if So we're going to extract the the B field, which is these bits here. So that will be uh, one 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 zero zero, and I cannot quite remember. Yes, we can use a B for binary. So if B is uh, this one. this or this then clear the bit and in fact we are going to want to record that anyway because we need to determine how long the instruction is going to be from the, the B value. So this is three bytes this is two bytes this is two bytes three bytes two bytes two bytes, three bytes, three bytes. Okay. 
Okay. So it now thinks the program counter has advanced four places, which is correct. This is three bytes, this is one byte. And the label will finally be set to this address. In fact, we should be able to, we haven't done that one yet. Let's put that in here. So this is just going to be this. So now we look at our saved dump. We are expecting to see that label here has been given a value. So label is the symbol which is here. 60 is the record header, uh, 04 is the label type which should be text, Zero, one, two, three, four, which it is, uh, then we have the variable it's based on which is 0 for this type, and then the value which is 4, which is the right value. Okay, and there is one other thing we need to do. Which is... If we ever have to change anything, then we need to record that fact because we're actually going to want to run this until the sizes of things converge. So if at any point a instruction changes size, we need to go around again because uh, all our program counter references may change. It's only after we've been through this once when nothing has changed that we know that we, we are finished. Okay. So the next step is to actually write it out. Let's just do And this should actually be also be very straightforward. We're going to do exactly the same thing where we just iterate through all this lot. So we're just going to copy this. Except instead of doing any computations, we just use the values that we have. So if it's a symbol, do nothing. If it's bytes, then we just write them.
we want to do write by emit byte writes them to the uh, to a new bytes record, which is not what we want. So this is going to be new byte record. Okay, ALU down here. Also pretty similar. We are going to write the opcode. variable then computes the actual address of the uh, the address of the thing and then here Write it out. Whereas this is a zero page thing, so we just write the uh, write the single byte. Label definition generates no code. Okay, it should not be wrote place code, this should be write code. And there is no return changed. So now if we run it, We should end up with the actual assembled result, which I can see at a glance is wrong. So what we've got, what we've done is here we have our LDA, which is at, has got the right value in it, which is five. Label has address four, so a is 5, so that's correct. And then we have an R R RTS, which is here, that's correct. And then we have a 6C, which looks like a, uh, a record header byte which suggests that we have actually written one too many byte here. Um, that looks okay. Okay, so that drops us into our debugger and it's just printed the address. So if we dump this, we get the actual record which just contains a 60. So it's written as the correct 60. So the 6C must be coming from somewhere else. Uh, 
uh, that's a bug in my debugger. It is not continuing on from a break statement properly. So that's because I forgot to save it. Yeah, there's definitely a 6C coming from somewhere in there. I know where it's come from. Right, it's in fact completely harmless. Uh, what this is, uh, where this has come from, is we're actually using our output buffer as our parse buffer. So it is going to contain garbage from the previous word that we read, which is being overwritten as we write bytes. So that's where that 6C is coming from. So that's that's correct. Uh, it'll just get overwritten when we do more things. Okay. However, we have not done everything yet because we also need to write relocations. Uh, these will appear immediately after the the main code. Uh, so we're going to have write text relocations. So this is again is going to be another copy of place code here. The difference here between this and write code, uh, hang on, we put this in the wrong place, is that we actually want to keep track of the program counter again. Yeah, we need to put this after write code. So, do you want to advance the program counter here? And here, but not here. Okay, now record ALU is uh, a reference to a value that needs relocating. So let's just do the If there is a variable, then we are going to need to relocate. see that we need to write one relocation of type 4, which is text, at PC0. In fact, it's not PC0, it is... Uh, it needs to relocate the high byte for a text relocation. So... Um, Do 
the high byte is going to be at PC plus 2. Zero page relocations affect the low byte of the address, which is a, a PC plus one. Now for zero page relocations, it's the same code, although that we know that this can only be a zero page symbol and again it's at PC plus one and up here as well we are going to need to do next data data relocate We haven't done anything about the data and BSS segments. I'll leave those for the time being. So that this is seen that we need a text relocation at address two, which is this byte. And what it'll do when the binary is loaded is that it will read in, um, it will add on to all the bytes marked in the relocation table a, um, a value based on where the program is loaded in memory, thus fixing up all the addresses to the correct thing. And in fact, this is only writing text relocation, so it's never writing zero page relocations. So when we get one of those, we just want to do nothing. And this can go away completely. No, it can't because we need to keep track of the program counter. But it turns into that. So how bad has this affected our ouch? Uh, but that's actually because uh, we've got printf in it. There we go, that's better. Printf is a, the printf library is enormous. Using printf causes it to be pulled in. 5k. So on our BBC master, this is actually using up a substantial amount of our memory. That's still a reasonable amount left. Uh, did I copy the correct source file in here? No, I did not. Okay, let's... Uh... So now we should be able to actually run it properly.
Huh. Uh, the asterisk means that uh, CPM has crashed and it's fallen back to the Acorn Moz prompt. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. So, thinking about memory. Our assembler is now 5k. Once we've put in all the rest of the assembler, it's going to be going to be bigger. So let's say 10k, maybe 15. Uh, that's still going to leave uh, well another 5k will take this down to 12. Another 5k after that will take it down to 7k of free memory, which should be enough for a small program. On a bigger system, such as the, the BBC Master Tube system, where you have like 60 odd k of memory free, that will be enough for a large program. So I think that this is actually plausible, this approach we're taking. There are some optimizations we can do. This stuff is terrible. So uh, let's just do some playing with those and see how much we can make things smaller. Okay, let's try a bit of optimization to see if we can make a difference here. Now, one of the things I really don't like is I'm using actual explicit constants for the B values. So let's fix that. And we create an enum with our, what's that doing over there? With our B values in it. So let's find that table. So we have xind is naught, xind is naught, it's not well formatted, z page is 1, immediate is 2, abs is 3, oops, Y int is four. Uh, X index is five. Let's go with X pointer and Y pointer just so they're clearly different from index uh, y index is 6 and x index is 7 and in fact all of these uh, now let's do that So down here at the top of parser, along with all the instruction tables, we're going to have um, have a table of, you know, I'm going to put these in here so that we're going to use the shifted versions throughout because I think that will make life easier. 
So here, this is going to give the instruction length. And we're just going to use a simple lookup table. So uh, x pointer is 2. 0 page is 2. Immediate is 2. Absolute is 3. Y pointer is 2. X index 0 page is 2. Y index and X index are 3. So this should be 8 long, which we can enforce like this. So in order to get the instruction length, all we need to do is that. Okay, so how big is our program? 4911. So we can get rid of a lot of this stuff by just doing this. So what does this do to our code length? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so pull it, calling get instant length is actually going to pull in some extra code. So we have saved here exactly the same amount that we spent on it earlier. Um, so let's... Not that one. How about this one? You can replace this entire switch statement with that. There we go. You save a whole 20 bytes and that actually becomes smaller and more, rather more readable. So what else can we do? Well, Uh, each of the property, each of the B modes actually has various properties. So we can say does it reference zero page? Is it a pointer? Um, so what are we doing here? We want to know here the length. We want to know the length of the opcode so build, it does not build. So we can actually say
Lang is in lining get in some length, which I like it not to. That should not be bigger. And in fact, we can do a little bit better than this. So this will get the length of any ALU format instructions, so that's any of these. For anything else it won't work, more or less. So, I mean, for these instructions, this column will work, this column will not work because these are all one byte length, this column will work, this column will work, likewise here, but these won't. For this block of instructions, these are all rather mixed. We've got some zero page ones here. These are one byte, they're quite different. These are one byte, that's three byte. And we've got like outliers like JSR, which is a three byte. Uh, jump indirect, etc. But for the normal ALU instructions. This will now pull the uh, the length out of the opcode. So doesn't make any sense there, but here, for example, we can just say s opcode. slightly smaller. If we do S opcode here, what does that do to the program length? Oh, uh, smaller. I was not expecting that. It's managed to cache it in a variable. Okay, so what is it we actually want to know about our instructions? So we want B equals 3 and B equals 7. Three is, oh, these are the two absolute modes. In fact, we also need six. I've completely missed that one, messed that one up. Uh, but not here yet, because there is no zero page uh, index with Y operation. This is a indirect operation. So we do actually want just these two. Well, we can certainly change these to uh, X, in the X index and absolute. So what I was thinking about with properties is that we may be able to create a simple bit, a table of uh, addressing mode properties. So looking one up would just be a dereference and an and with one of these, which would probably save space.
also So this is going to be uh, bprop pointer, just bprop pointer, now this bprop zero page, all with bprop pointer, this one is bprop im. Both of these are bprop abs with bprop shrinkable. What are my other properties? Zero page, absolute, pointer, shrinkable, immediate. So what we're doing here is that if it is zero page or immediate, then the instruction length is two. Otherwise, the instruction length is three. So, Okay, what does that do to our length? Quite a bit smaller. Why? I don't know, but I'm willing to guess that this is now sufficiently complicated that LLVM has decided not to inline it. Okay, so down here in our placement, we don't need that anymore. And in fact, it occurs to me Yes, abs and x index. Uh, I actually put the flags in the wrong place. Abs is shrinkable. Y index is not. Size, a little smaller, that is an improvement. So we don't need anything in write code, but we do need it this here, write text relocations. So if this is a absolute value, if there's an absolute addressing mode and 
there is a variable and the variable is pointing at the at one of our text segments then we need a relocation exactly the same length great so has that actually helped well it's helped a little we've already gone down from our original 4911 to 4883 We may be able to use the flag stuff to help elsewhere. Actually, I probably, probably should find out whether this works. Yes, that looks good. So I think that's mostly been a success. And this is, you need to want to change these to use the constants. This one is X pointer. one hang on, is not equal to y. That is y pointer. That is x pointer. This is x index. This is oops, y index. No, it's not. This is x index zp, and this is x index. This one is y index. This is zero, um, zero page. This is absolute. Still looks good for our minimal testing. We were 4883, we are 4889. Yeah, this is way too premature optimization. It's making the code cleaner, which is a good thing. And it's making all this stuff shorter, which is nice. Okay. Uh, Let's try LDA and see what happens. So here is our first LDA and then here we are correctly getting the low byte, which is nice. Good, that seems to have worked. Okay, I think that we have, 
not actually emitting any of the relocation stuff yet. Uh, let's just do that. So, the way the, the relocations work is that it's a list of nibbles, each of which indicates the distance from the last relocation. So we need to know what that is. And we need a buffer to store the actual relocation information in. And And we need a flag to tell us whether we actually need to flush the buffer or not. So to write this relocation, we are going to have to calculate the delta between where we are now and the last relocation. And then write multiple relocation nibbles. Right, I'm going to have to take this all out of line. Zero relocation buffer is minus one. Minus one being a special value to mean uh, that there is nothing in it. So, actually, you went sixteen. This okay. This is actually going to write a raw nibble. So if relocation buffer is minus one, then save the relocation in the top four bits. Otherwise, Write the last relocation and the current relocation together. And the relocation buffer is now empty. So we don't want last relocation anymore. Oops. For some reason, if, if I occasionally, when I bump my mouse, it will delete a line from the editor, and I'm not quite sure why. and turn caps lock on.
Okay, calculate the delta, which is PC minus last relocation. While the delta is greater than or equal to E, E is a magic value, which means don't actually do a relocation, just advance the pointer by E byte. And on the exit, we want to write a F relocation, meaning the end of the stream. And if uh, there is a pending byte, well, let's actually just do a flush relocations. flush relocations to flush the stream. That should be relocation buffer. Okay, what do we get in our output file? We should have a relocation at address 3. We do not. We do, however, have Two relocations at address zero. I know what I did. I forgot to update this, and in fact, we want the address to be. PC plus two because that is the high byte of the opcode. So we have a relocation of zero followed by a two. So two is correct. It puts a relocation here, which is what we want. And then there's an F. So where is that initial zero coming from. Have I, I have forgotten to call reset relocation writer. There we go, I bumped my mouse and did something weird again. And turn caps lock on. Right, 2F is correct, that is the correct relocation table for this code here. Notice that this 7 from this does not get a relocation entry because that's always getting the low byte which doesn't need this form of relocation. So good. And we are at 5.5k is growing annoyingly, but I think we are going to be able to make it work. We also have way too many copies of this routine. I'm not really sure it's worth trying to comment things out. 
to be honest. That would involve a function pointer and I don't think it's worth it. And multiple switches. Because we're also going to have to copy write text relocations to write zero page relocations. In fact, let's do that now because zero page relocations are actually fairly simple. So if it's a ZP, we go through this code. So we can common this actually So I put these the wrong way around. So let's dish stack this down here. So this again is going to be right relocation four. We get rid of this. That's going to be PC plus one. And that's going to be uh, Z P or M. No, no, it's not. In fact, I don't think that's relevant at all. I think the only thing that matters is the variable type. So I think we can get rid of that completely, because this will then relocate any two byte addresses. It's assuming that all text symbols will be encoded using two byte forms, but we can. So the same applies down here. If it's a zero page symbol, regardless of whether it's a abs form, where it's going to be encoded as a two byte constant, so three byte instruction, or as a two byte instruction with one byte of address, that is still going to work. And that makes our code a little bit smaller. But we have but we have no way to generate zero page constants yet. So that's not actually going to do anything. It does generate a uh, interesting two, three F zero. Right. So that's tried to relocate this which we can't do. So actually, I think that we are going to need to 
to I think we are going to need to gate that. So if it's a absolute, which will be uh, not that, it will be abs or the three indexes. Let me just double check that. There's our table. Abs and the, the two indexes, sorry. Then it's going to attempt to relocate it, not otherwise. Okay, 2F, F0 for the relocation table. Remember, these are read as nibbles. So that is now looking more correct. Uh, let me just put another uh, one of these in. Two five F0, so 0, 1, 2. Relocate that address. 0, 1, Two, three, four, five. Relocate that address. Excellent. Okay, I think that we have relocations working. What are we going to do next? Well, the biggie, the thing that really that, uh, that is going to take work, is branch instructions because the six five zero two only has. these conditional branches, and they only take relative uh, offsets, which can be one byte. So they can jump between minus 128 and plus 127 bytes from the program counter when this is executed. I want to uh, allow branches to expand so that if you try to jump too far, then it will turn this into that. The reason for this is compilers. So this is five bytes. This is two bytes. So we're going to need our branch instructions to shrink based on where they are jumping to. And that's going to be the big job of the code placement. So let's do that next time.